We never ought to be so arrogant as to think that we understand God's ways. We don't. We are finite and God is infinite. We are circumscribed by time and space, matter and energy. God is totally beyond them. So for any one of us to think that we can really fathom and comprehend God's ways is a view that is grounded in arrogance that flows from ignorance. So the first thing we have to learn is humility. Humility means to think even in the face of adversity. When I think of the late Rabbi Manfred Fulda, Zichron Olivracha, I think immediately of that which we say every evening, right before the Shema, Kihem Chayenu Pi Orech Yameinu. Literally, Torah is our life and the length of our days. Rabbi Fulda animated Torah. When he taught, you saw excitement within him. Rabbi Fulda became the Rebbe to many of us. Um, unfortunately, in that semester, in the very first semester, my father was Nifter. I remember uh, that I turned around at the funeral parlor and there was Rabbi Fulda towards the back with almost all the members of my class. Um, that's what Rabbi Fulda was all about. In um, 1958, um, I walked in off the streets of Manhattan into basically Europe and the traditions of Europe and went to my first class in the Mechina that was set up. Rav Fulda was my teacher for Dinim. Now Rabbi Fulda probably had thousands upon thousands of Talmidim over the, I think close to 60 years of teaching, but he knew everybody. And so it was a big zchus to be in his presence and to be a Talmud. Paul's relationship with Rabbi Fulda then um, became also part of my relationship as I had him as a teacher at Stern College. And when we went to see him and, and became closer with him um, as our Rebbe, one of the most amazing things for us was since we lost three of our parents quite young, he came to California where we were living at the time for our oldest son's bar mitzvah. And he was there for us and he was a part of our family and supported us in every way. He was always in touch and we knew that, that he was there and that made a very big difference in our lives and for our children. He was able to communicate with all generations and all kinds of guys, with yarmulkes, without yarmulkes, tattooed Sanchanim and, and, and ultra-Orthodox all at the same time. So this was, uh, we lost a unique voice, but his voice is represented in his students, and we hear it. One of the most um, special things I remember about being in his class was um, the Taras of Ishbacha class, was the way he spoke to us about relationships between a husband and a wife, and the way he spoke about his own wife. Um, and, and the importance of how we treat each other and, and be there for one another. And I think that, uh, aside from all the halachos that we learned and, and tried to learn well, um, that made the biggest impression upon me. Among Rev. Fulda's greatest qualities was his, his ability to connect with students. And when you spoke to him, you really got the feeling that he was not putting on an act, that he was sincerely interested in you, what you were doing, how you were progressing. During my 50 years at YU, which he was present for all that time, he interacted with me. How are you growing? What are you teaching them? Maybe teach them something like this. What kind of students are we getting? Please send me any student that needs physical or emotional or monetary or, or uh, help. And so he acted as a, as a strong Rebbe but, and, and the Meshkiach Ruchani, and uh, a Baal Chesed. And in that way, he endeared himself literally to thousands of people. Everyone that you meet has a full story of what the Rebbe did for them, what he said for them, what he, what he changed their lives, etc., etc. There was something so genuine about him that you loved him, you loved the material, and just like Avram Avinu, who literally was Megayer, so many in the sense of bringing people to a love of Judaism, this was the late Rav Manfred Fulda.